So um, welcome. I'm Bhas Kavira. I direct the university's Conservation Research Institute. I work in the Department of Geography. And it's a great pleasure to see a number of you here. Um, this is part of um, a workshop that has been supported by CRASH, which is the university's Center for Research in Arts, Social Sciences, and the Humanities, and by the Luke Hoffman Institute. Uh, we've been working together for some time, and I'll give you some background to the workshop. CRASH exists within the university to support interdisciplinarity. Workshops is one part of the program of events that they organize. Um, and we've got alongside today's public lecture uh, a series of um, a, a, a meeting which will take place over the course of the next two days. Uh, those who are interested, there is a, there is a public event at the end of this uh, uh, workshop as well, which takes place on Friday, uh, 2 o'clock in the David Attenborough building. And you're all very welcome to come back and attend. Um, the purpose of these crash workshops, is these crash working groups, is to stimulate interdisciplinary conversations across uh, between people. Please come and join us in the front, because there's, there's plenty of space. <laughs> um, so the idea of these crash workshops is that they stimulate conversations. In this particular case, we are trying to bring together what we dis define as two distinct communities, uh, people working as uh, conservation and ecological scientists, largely in the conservation field, with those who work in, in uh, the broadly defined field of accounting, um, to try and see how a conversation about accounting for the management of ecosystems could be stimulated across those communities. Uh, I won't describe in too much detail the project because my colleagues Clément Figue and uh, Laura Merme are going to be talking about the project in just a minute. Um, I'm here really to welcome you and to introduce our keynote speaker, which I will do when it's his turn to come up to, this, to, the, to the podium. So welcome. I hope you'll enjoy this afternoon's presentation. Um, you are all invited to join us for a reception after that upstairs in the David Attenborough building. Come and join us in the front. It's not going to fill up. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so immediately after this, there will be a reception upstairs in the David Atwood building, which you're all very welcome to join us at. And uh, do join the conversation, because the, the purpose of this public lecture is to stimulate some, some discussion. So do, do feel free in the question and answer session to really join in the conversation. Um, I think I'm going to hand over to Laurent Mermet. Uh, who will then tell us a little bit more about, about the dialogue we're trying to start. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, so I'm going to do this presentation with uh, Clément, who has been the active force be behind the organization uh, of, this, uh, of this event. And uh, I will uh, start by uh, the reflection on what we are here to do by asking the question, who manages an ecosystem? Everything would be much simpler if ecosystems were managed by a rational operator with full powers to manage the ecosystem. And then it would be only a matter of gathering the right information uh, doing the right evaluation of that information, and that would lead to decision making in a straightforward way. But when we look at field situation, what we see is very different. It's a tangle of actors, heterogeneous views, different values, uh, non-consistent knowledge, power plays, etc. Uh, one might say it's not an organization, but if we follow works in organizational sociology, uh, this describes an organization. It's a place where there is tension between different values, actors, organizations, etc. So for 30 years, I've been working on the assumption that to each ecosystem or to each ecological problem, we can associate a de facto management system, the whole system of the actions that create the outcomes on that ecosystem, which are called actual management. And then managing an ecosystem means to understand and improve that de facto organization and try to intervene strategically on it to improve it. Uh, this is the point of strategic environmental management analysis, the stream of research that we're 
uh, been pushing for many years. And I think that this addresses one of the major issues that both the accountants and uh, who are interested in envir envir uh, managing ecosystems and biodiversity and the ecologists who are dealing with information systems to manage biodiversity and ecosystems are confronted with, uh, which is how to recenter on ecosystems and to have organizational thinking centered on ecosystems. There are four big obstacles that we've been working on for the two decades. The first is, if it has no front and no bus, can it be an organization? Uh, people find it hard to believe that you can have an organization if it doesn't have a legal front and a boss that you can talk to. Here, the answer comes from Crozier and Friedberg, 1977, uh, with the concept of organized action of, or organized action systems. If it behaves like an organization, if when you try to interact with the people and the situation, it reacts like an organization, then you can deal with it both theoretically and practically, as if it were an organization. This is extremely important for what we do because it means that we can mobilize the entire uh, weaponry and analytical weaponry of organizational studies to bear upon ecosystem-centered organizational analysis. Secondly, when we look at ecosystem situations, uh, very often, we find that it's extremely messy and we are extremely unhappy with the outcomes. And then people say, you cannot say it's organized, it's highly disorganized since you have very bad outcomes. Pe this is because people tend to, go to confuse good organizing and being organized. Well, this is not the case. You can have organizations that function in a chaotic way and that create very bad outputs. Uh, if you take, for instance, food production and distribution in southern Sudan, you're not going to argue that it creates great outcomes or, or that it works in a fluid manner, but it's very organized. There are actors, structures, uh, rules, etc. Very distasteful ones sometimes, but it's organized. It's not disorganized. It's organized in a way that produces bad outcomes. The third big obstacle towards recentering on ecosystems, uh, our organizational reasoning, is okay, you've convinced me. I see that it's a badly designed organization, uh, uh, organized action system, but others don't think so. So can I reason in terms of organization in, if not everyone recognizes it's an organization? Well, here the answer is yes, you can. I can interpret a situation as an organiz organized action system even if others don't, because it's not just about seeing organizations as an object that is out there. An org organization is also a concept that helps us read the structured interdependencies between actors, action systems, and outcomes. So I can authorize myself to read these interdependencies in terms of confronting an organized situation, even if other people, for other reasons, resist that reading. The fourth obstacle is that if you have uh, dealt with the three, the three first ones, then you are left with the question, how do you determine the parameter of the organization? This is very fuzzy. Uh, if I take a dysfunctional ecosystem like uh, a coastal river in Brittany that produces masses of green algae that pollute the estuary, it's very organized. The, the, the way the farmers put the excess of nitrogen, it's not haphazard, it's, it's part of an action system. Uh, how do I determine the parameter of the organization? I can do that. Uh, starting from my own ecological concern, I'm concerned about green algae, and then I can reconstruct all the chain of interdependency that leads to that green algae proliferation and see how it's organized and reflect on how I can intervene on it. So this, of course, so these four ways to overcome the barriers to organizational and strategic reasoning that is ecosystem-centered 
uh, of course require big reframings and also they need to tap into theoretical resources that are not very familiar to many of the uh, participants in the debate about managing ecosystems. Uh, for instance, the last one requires that you accept relativistic positions on how we read the organizing systems that determine uh, environmental uh, outcomes. But we think this is the way uh, to st structure or to give ourselves a framework that authorizes us and gives us tools to recenter on ecosystems. Uh, I'd like to say a few more uh, a few more words on the kind of research perspective that um, Clément and I and our other colleagues work on when we do uh, strategic environmental management analyses. The first point is that it's a reflexive design research perspective. For instance, if we compare what we do with our colleagues like uh, pragmatic sociologists, uh, uh, like uh, Boltonski and Tevno or Bruno Latour or, or others, what they're trying to do is to account in detail and being very faithful to what people do. They're not trying to find good ideas on how to act. They're trying to account for what people do in the best possible way. What we're trying to do is to identify in a certain situation what traits are relevant to inform our strategic effort to better organize and when I say better organized, it's to organize better in terms of uh, uh, environmental outcomes. In disciplinary terms, this is, for instance, the kind of reasoning that obtains in strategy, not all of strategy, but in strategy, a subdiscipline of management, uh, which is the subdiscipline I'm working mostly with. Uh, in strategy, you do work on how a business can think about itself and its environment in a way that informs better strategy for itself, not in a way that accounts most precisely and faithfully for what people do uh, in the situation. This perspective that's centered on strategic organizing towards better environmental outcomes has uh, several uh, applications like strategy design, futures planning, evaluation of action, etc. Many aspects of strategy can be mobilized that way. But then on these organizations that I just described, or organizational reading, accounting is also an essential dimension. Improving accounting is impro can be a way to improve the organization and the other way around. Of course, the big question, many things in organization are based on pretending to act in a rational way and then it happens. If you look at business plans in strategy, they never describe what's going to happen, but writing them makes things happen. The whole question about ecological accounting, it, it may make things happen. When does it, when does it not? This is the whole question in our workshop. So, so far, well, so far there have been um, many efforts to innovate in environmental accounting, to gradually integrate biodiversity and ecosystems within existing accounting systems. And these innovations have been centered on two types of more or less traditional accounting entities and perimeters. On the one hand, the perimeter of a single organization or a business, uh, it is the case, for instance, for biodiversity reporting or recently developed natural capital protocol or other tools that measure an organization's dependencies to ecosystems. On the other hand, we've had a lot of efforts uh, to produce ecosystem accounting innovations that have been proposed for decades at the national scale, fitted to the spatial and administrative boundaries of states. And it is the case, for instance, of natural capital assessments in the UK or for experimental ecosystem natural capital accounts like the one produced by the CBD recently. So what we hope to explore and work on in this workshop is the possibility of designing accounting system for another kind of uh, accounting perimeter at the ecosystem management scale. The kind of ecosystem-centered accounting systems 
could help negotiate, they could help organize, they could help to equip multiple accountabilities uh, and multiple reciprocal commitments made between various organizations on the landscape, connected by their shared responsibility uh, towards a given ecological entity and whether they have positive or negative impact. So these ecological entity can be watersheds, they can be lakes and lagunas, they can be ecological corridors, um, whatever. But to make substantial progress uh, towards the design of such accounting uh, for the management of ecosystems, there are many steps to be taken. Uh, one of the first steps, and maybe a precondition for the other, is uh, what we hope to achieve in the next two days, which is bringing to together two communities of research and practice uh, that uh, need to exchange and build strong collaborations, which is, on the one hand, the, cons the conservation community, and on the other hand, the critical and uh, social and environmental accounting research community. So, the conservation community's central concern uh, has been for decades the development of knowledge and interventions that effectively contribute to the achievement uh, of ecological results and the improvement of the ecological management uh, organizing in some ways. The production of new ecological data, as well as the design and use of a diversity and always more performant uh, quantification and information systems that give us data on the status and trends of biodiversity and ecosystems has increasingly become a key dimension of conservation research and action. These include, for instance, systems of ecological indicators, ecosystem services assessment, fauna and flora inventories, citizen science, IUCN red list, etc. Some of these systems uh, and in some cases, the development of uh, these uh, quantification and information systems have performed well and have effectively contributed to organizing the sound management of a given ecological issue or a given ecological entity. Success stories involve, for instance, the use of fish population inventory and monitoring to support the enforcement of uh, fishing quotas for the At Atlantic Cod in the Barents Sea. They involve harmonization of good ecological status indicators uh, under the Water Framework Directives, or they involve, for instance, using ecosystem services assessment to set up standards to organize different kinds of human activities uh, along the coast, the coast of Belize. But in many cases, the use of this information system creates some frustration in the conservation community, as they often fail to effectively influence policy, business, investors' decision-making processes to the level uh, of expectations as of their designers. They often fail to, beyond the pilot project logic, be the basis of negotiation of new ecological commitments and responsibilities among multiple stakeholders that last in time. And they often fail to support lasting accountabilities that uh, lead to uh, uh, measurable ecological outcomes. And most of the time, we find that these challenges are not so much due to a lack of data or to a lack of knowledge or to the tools on technical limitations, uh, but to the very organizational, social, and political nature of designing and using this information system for conservation action. So this is precisely uh, why we think the critical accounting uh, research community can help uh, and why it is needed to overcome some of these challenges and open the way towards designing information systems that more effectively lead to ecological outcome and lasting changes in the management of the planet's ecosystems. The first and fundamental reason relates to the very project and raison d'etre of uh, the critical accounting research community as a field since it emerged since the, the 1970s, uh, through, notably through a, a journal called Accounting Organization and Society, uh, which is, in essence, going beyond functionalist, economic, or instrumental approaches of quantification and accounting systems within organizational settings, and to study in depth their connection between these accounting systems and the organizations and institutions in which they are used and that they contribute to materialize. So this program of work has been mostly, of course, applied to conventional accounting entities, such as businesses, but also to more unconventional uh, organizations, such as Jesuit societies, with the work of Paolo Quattrone. Uh, and our working hypothesis is to say that if ecosystem management is indeed a specific family of organizations in the making, 
Then accounting research should I, should should I, should should sorry should be able to provide key perspective to study the profound connections between information systems for conservation and the multiple dimensions of organizing ecosystems to reach better outcomes. So, in other words, uh, one of the reasons we're here is that uh, is the idea that since accounting research has invested decades in studying accounting systems that respond to different types of complex business and organizational uh, settings, doing that by mobilizing a large spectrum of theories from sociology, from theory of organization, uh, from management or political science, we think and we hope the same can be done to investigate and develop new ecosystem-centered accounting systems that respond to a diversity of ecosystem-centered management organizations, as described by Laurent. So, in the past few years, uh, lots of researchers in social and environmental accounting community, and uh, a lot of them are here in the room, which is in some ways a subfield of the critical accounting research field, have already made many proposals as how to extend business accounting perimeters so that it integrates biodiversity and ecosystems. Lots of proposals as how to decenter accounting to, from business to start exploring new types of accounts, new types of, uh, of accounting entities and new types of accountabilities. And we hope that this workshop will contribute to a third effort that we believe is necessary to recenter accounting research on ecosystem management organizational arrangements through the active design and field experimentation of ecosystem centered accounting in collaboration with the, co the conservation community. So for these collaborations to, <laughs> oops, uh, yeah, two things are missing, but for this collaboration to work out, we first need to identify more specifically what the accounting community can bring to the conservation community and vice versa, knowing that they have big differences in their academic, cultural backgrounds and also in the types of objects that they are used to um, study. So we have here a non-exhaustive list that is also in, in um, that uh, didn't survive the Mac to PC um, uh, conversion, uh, which involves, for instance, uh, from the conservation community, development of innovative data quantification and information systems, to improve the, of course, uh, constantly improving knowledge of ecological functionings and their relationship with human actions. Uh, Lots of field experimentations, case studies, strategies and action for conservation in concrete field works where uh, ec ecological outcomes are fought for and expected, and a strong normative focus on achieving ecological outcomes. And from the qualitative accounting research um, um, side, uh, can provide a rich conceptual repertoire decades of experience in theorizing and studying connections between accounting systems and organizational life increased reflexivity on design and use of information systems in various contexts, and design of innovative accounting and information and ways of structuring information. So I will just have a final word by saying that to add to uh, Chapman and Collins claim that accounting is too important to be studied only by accountants, we would like to add that quantification and information systems for conservation action are too serious to be studied only by ecologists and economists and could greatly benefit from the contribution of qualitative accounting research. I will now leave the floor to Paolo, who will give us uh, uh, key conceptual and historical insights on why accounting is much more than a set of tools, but a fantastic perspective to approach, to think some of the fundamental issues faced by human societies or societies. Thank you very much.